judges, every man did what was right in his own eyes. The Incomplete Conquest After Joshua's death, the Israelites continued their conquest of Canaan but failed to completely expel its native inhabitants. This incomplete conquest had significant long-term repercussions for the Israelite nation. God's declaration that these remaining peoples would be a continual hindrance to Israel's enjoyment of the Promised Land was quickly realized. The indigenous Canaanite populations left within the territories of Israel became a persistent source of temptation and conflict. Intermarriage and Idolatry Subsequent generations of Israelites began to turn away from the Lord. They intermarried with the Canaanites, which led to the adoption of the deities and religious practices of the local inhabitants. This was a direct violation of God's command to remain separate and devoted solely to Him. The influence of the Canaanites introduced a plethora of pagan practices into Israelite society, including the worship of Baal and Asherah, which was often associated with morally degrading, degrading rites and rituals. God's Response to Disobedience This deviation from God's commandments had severe repercussions. As the Israelites embraced the idolatrous ways of the Canaanites, they fell into a cycle of disobedience and divine retribution. God, observing the waywardness of His people, warned them of abandonment, but in His mercy, selected a series of judges to serve as temporary leaders. These judges were meant to guide Israel back to the path of righteousness, delivering them from their enemies and restoring their faith in God. Moral and Spiritual Chaos The praise, every man did what was right in his own eyes, which can be gleaned from Judges chapter 17, 6, and chapter 21-25 epitomizes the moral and spiritual chaos that characterized the period. This era was marked by a lack of centralized leadership which contributed to widespread moral decay and societal instability. Without a king or a stable line of leadership, there was no consistent authority to enforce God's laws. This led to a relativistic approach to morality where each person acted according to their own desires and understanding, often in direct opposition to God's commandments. Death of Joshua The End of an Era Joshua, the esteemed leader who had guided Israel into the Promised Land, died at the age of 110. His leadership had been pivotal in conquering and dividing the land among the tribes of Israel. However, unlike Moses, Joshua did not appoint a successor as his death approach. approach. This lack of succession planning led to a leadership vacuum within the Israelite community. Without a central figure to lead and guide them, the Israelites began to falter in their faith and commitment to God's commandments. Consequences of Leadership Vacuum In the absence of strong leadership, the Israelites struggled to complete the conquest of Canaan. They settled among the native inhabitants, which led to significant cultural and religious compromises. The Israelites allowed themselves to be influenced by the pagan practices of their neighbors, gradually 
adopting their idolatrous customs, and abandoning the worship of the true God. This period marked the beginning of a recurring cycle of sin and redemption that is de detailed throughout the Book of Justice, Judges. The Cycle of Sin and Redemption The Israelites would fall into sin, typically by worshipping other gods, which led to oppression by surrounding nations. In their dis distress, they would cry out to God for deliverance, and God, in His mercy, would raise up a judge to lead and save them. After a period of peace, the cycle would begin again with the Israelites falling back into sin. This pattern persisted until the establishment of the Davidic dynasty, which provided Israel with more stable and enduring leadership. Generation that did not know the Lord. The loss of knowledge. Following the death of Joshua and his contemporaries, a new generation arose that did not know the Lord or the mighty works he had done for Israel. Judges chapter 2 verse 10 This generational shift had profound implications for the spiritual health of the nation. The lack of first-hand knowledge and experience of God's power and faithfulness led to a decline in religious observance and moral standards. This new generation's ignorance of God's acts was not merely a lack of information, but indicated a deeper spiritual disconnect. The Turn to Idolatry Judges chapter 2 verse 11 states this, that this new generation did what was evil in the sight of the Lord and served the Baals forsaking the God of their fathers who had brought them out of Egypt. This abandonment of the covenant relationship with God ignited his righteous anger resulting in divine punishment. As a consequence, God allowed Israel to be plundered by their enemies leading to periods of great suffering and distress. The worship of Baal and other Canaanite gods represented not only religious apostasy, but also a rejection of the values and laws that God had given Israel. Divine Punishment and Mercy God's response to Israel's unfaithfulness was both just and merciful. His anger was kindled against them, leading to their subjugation by surrounding nations. However, when the Israelites repented and cried out for help, God raised up judges to deliver them. This cycle of punishment and deliverance highlights God's justice in dealing with sin and His mercy in providing a way for repentance and restoration. Importance of Religious Education The pattern observed here underscores the critical importance of passing down the knowledge of God from one generation to the next. When the knowledge of God's mighty acts and His commandments is preserved and shared, faith is nourished and obedience flourishes. Conversely, when this knowledge is neglected, ignorance and unbelief take root, leading to moral and spiritual decay. The generational failure to transmit the knowledge of God and His deeds resulted in a society that was easily swayed by idolatry and moral relativism. Lessons for Modern Believers For modern believers, this passage offers a compelling lesson on the importance of religious education 
and the active transmission of faith. Parents and community leaders have a solemn duty to teach children about God and His saving works, ensuring that future generations remain faithful and obedient to His commandments. The history of Israel during the time of the judges serves a warning about the dangers of neglecting this responsibility and the consequences of a society that turns away from God. In conclusion, the period of the judges was marked by a cycle of sin, oppression, repentance, and deliverance. The lack of central leadership and the failure to pass down the knowledge of God led to moral and spiritual chaos. However, God's mercy was evident in His continual provision of judges to guide and deliver His people. This era highlights the importance of faithfulness, vigilance in teaching future generations, and reliance on God for leadership and deliverance. Cycles of Sin and Salvation 12 Judges Introduction to the Cycle of Sin and Salvation The Book of Judges presents a recurring pattern that defines the spiritual and moral trajectory of the Israelite nation during this period. This pattern, often referred to as a type sin, is vividly illustrated in the story of Othniel, the first judge. Judges chapter 3, verses 7 to 12. The cycle involves five distinct stages. Sin, servitude, supplication, salvation, and silence. Understanding this cycle is crucial for comprehending the broader narrative of Judges, and the theological lessons it impart. Sin, the beginning of decline. The cycle typically begins with Israel's unfaithfulness to Yahweh. The Israelites fall into sin, often characterized by idolatry and the abandonment of the covenant relationship with God. Judges describes this initial stage. The Israelites did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, forgetting the Lord their God, and serving the Baals and the Asherahs. This turning away from God leads to moral decay and societal instability, setting the stage for subsequent oppression. Servitude consequences of sin as a direct consequence of their sin god allows israel to be oppressed by their enemies this stage of servitude serves as divine retribution for their unfaithfulness in the case of othniel in judges chapter 3 verse 8 states Therefore the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he sold them into the hand of Cushan Rithaim, king of Mesopotamia. And the Israelites served Cushan Rithaim for eight years. The period of servitude is marked by suffering and subjugation, highlighting the severity of turning away from God. Supplication, crying out to God. In their distress, the Israelites cry out to God for deliverance. This stage of supplication is a pivotal turning point in the cycle. It signifies a collective recognition of their sin and a plea for God's intervention. Judges chapter 3 verse 9 captures this moment. But when the Israelites cried out to the Lord, the Lord raised up a deliverer for the Israelites who delivered them. 
Othniel, son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother. This act of supplication demonstrates the Israelites' dependence on God's mercy and their hope for salvation. Salvation, God's deliverance. In response to Israel's repentance and peace, God raises up a judge to deliver them from their oppression. This stage of salvation is characterized by divine intervention and the restoration of peace. Judges chapter 3 verses 10 to 11 describes Othniel's role as a deliverer. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him and he judged Israel. He went out to war, and the Lord gave Cushan Rishathaim, king of Mesopotamia, into his hand. And his hand prevailed over Cushan Rishathaim. So the land had rest 40 years. The judge serves as both a military leader and a spiritual guide, leading Israel back to a right relationship with God. Silence, period of peace and complacency. The final stage of the cycle is a period of silence when the land experiences peace and rest. However, this peace is often temporary as the Israelites eventually fail back into sin, restarting the cycle. Judges chapter 3.11 concludes the account of Othniel with the statement, Then Othniel, son of Kenaz, died. The death of the judge typically signals the end of this period of rest, and the cycle begins anew with Israel's return to sin. Major and Minor Judges Classification of Judges The judges of Israel are classified into major and minor categories based on their roles, roles and the extent of their narratives. The minor judges such as Shamgar, Tola, Ba'ir, Ibzan, Elon, and Abdon serve primarily as adjudicators. Their stories are brief and focus mainly on their roles as dispensers of justice. For example, Tola and Jair are mentioned in Judges 10, 1 to 5 with limited details about their leadership, emphasizing their function as local leaders who maintained order and delivered justice. In contrast, the major judges such as Deborah, Gideon, and Samson were leaders who played significant roles in delivering Israel from its oppressors. Their narratives are more detailed and often include accounts of military victories and spiritual leadership. These major judges were not only warriors but also provided spiritual guidance to bring Israel back to faithfulness. Their stories illustrate the profound impact of their leadership on the, the nation's spiritual and physical well-being. Role of Major Judges The major judges were instrumental in both military and spiritual deliverance. For instance, Deborah, the prophetess and judge, led Israel to victory against the Canaanite army led by Sisera. You can see that from Judges 4 verse 5. Her leadership was marked by faith in God and inspired courage among the Israelites. Similarly, Gideon, despite his initial doubts, led a small army to defeat the Midianites, showcasing God's power to deliver through unlikely means. You can see that from Judges chapter 6, verse 8. Samson, known for his extraordinary strength, 
delivered Israel from the Philistines. Although his personal failures and moral weaknesses eventually led to his downfall. You can see that from Judges 13 verse 16. The narratives of these major judges highlight the complexities of their leadership and the consequences of both their faithfulness and failures. Their stories serve as powerful examples of God's ability to use flawed individuals for His purposes and the importance of remaining faithful to God's commands. Understanding the Cycle The Danger of Losing Love for God The cycle in Judges teaches us the danger of losing our love for God and the importance of turning back to Him for restoration. Each stage of the cycle, sin, servitude, supplication, salvation, and silence, illustrates the consequences of turning away from God and the mercy He extends when His people repent. This pattern observed in the Old Testament continues in the New Covenant emphasizing the need for constant vigilance and repentance in our spiritual lives. Relevance to Modern Believers For modern believers, the cycle in Judges is a reminder of the importance of maintaining a close, a close and faithful relationship with God. Just as the Israelites experienced cycles of faithfulness and apostasy, Christians today must guard against the temptation to drift away from God. The consequences of turning away from God are severe, but His mercy and willingness to forgive are always available to those who repent and seek Him. Lessons from the Judges The stories of the Judges offer several important lessons for believers. Number one, dependence on God. The deliverance of Israel through the judges underscores the importance of relying on God's strength rather than human power. The judges, despite their flaws, were used by God to accomplish His purposes, highlighting His sovereignty and grace. Number two, repentance and restoration. The cycle of sin and salvation emphasizes the need for repentance and the hope of restoration. No matter how far we have strayed, God is always willing to forgive and restore us if we turn back to Him with sincere hearts. Vigilance in Faith The recurring pattern of apostasy in Judges serves as a warning to remain vigilant in our faith. Complacency can lead to a gradual decline in our relationship with God, making it essential to stay grounded in His Word and committed to living out His commandments. The role of leadership, it's number four. The impact of the judge's leadership Leadership on Israel's spiritual and physical well-being highlights the importance of godly leadership. Leaders who seek God's guidance and act in accordance with His will can bring about significant positive change and lead others towards faithfulness. Applying the Lessons To apply these lessons in our lives, we must cultivate a deep and abiding love for God. Regularly engage in self-examination and repentance and seek His guidance in all areas of our lives. By doing so, we can avoid the pitfalls of the Israelites and experience the peace and blessings that come from a faithful relationship with God. Conclusion the cycle of sin and salvation in the book of Judges provides a powerful framework for understanding the, the spiritual journey of the Israelite nation 
and its relevance to modern believers. The stages of sin, servitude, supplication, salvation, and silence illustrate the consequences of turning away from God and the hope of restoration through repentance. The classification of judges into major and minor categories highlights the diverse roles they played in delivering Israel and leading them back to faithfulness. For contemporary Christians, the lessons from judges serve as a reminder of the importance of maintaining a close relationship with God, the necessity of repentance, and the value of godly leadership. By understanding and applying these lessons, we can navigate our spiritual journeys with greater faithfulness and experience the fullness of God's grace and mercy. Judges Save Israel Deborah and Barak versus Sisera Deborah's Leadership and Prophecy Deborah, whose name means Buzzing Bee, stands out as one of the most remarkable figures in the book of Judges. She was not only a judge, but also a prophetess. A role that underscored her spiritual authority and insight. Unlike many other judges, Deborah's story is unique because she was a woman who held significant influence and led Israel during a time of great oppression. As a prophetess, Deborah provided uh, divine guidance to the Israelites. Her role involved conveying God's messages to the people and offering judgments on various matters. This dual role of judge and prophetess positioned her as a central figure in Israel's spiritual and political landscape. Collaboration with Barak Deborah's leadership is most famously demonstrated in her collaboration with Barak, an Israelite military commander. The Israelites were under the severe oppression of King Javin of Canaan, whose army was led by Sisera, a formidable commander with 900 iron chariots. This technological advantage made Sisera's forces particularly intimidating and difficult to, lead, to defeat. In Judges chapter 4, verses 6 to 7, Deborah summoned Barak and conveyed God's command that he should lead an army against Sisera. The Lord, the God of Israel, commands you, Go, take with you 10,000 men of Naphtali and Sebulun, and lead them up to Mount Tabor. I will lead Sisera, the commander of Javin's army, with his chariots and his troops to the Kishon River and give him into your hands. Barak agreed to go, but only if Deborah would accompany him. His response highlights his faith in Deborah's leadership and God's presence with her. If you go with me, I will go. But if you don't go with me, I won't go. You see that in Judges chapter 4, verse 8. Deborah agreed to go, but informed Barak that the honor of victory would not be his, but would instead go to a woman. The Battle and Victory the battle against Sisera took place near the Kishon River. Despite Sisera's military superiority, God's intervention ensured Israel's victory. A sudden rainstorm caused the river to flood, rendering Sisera's chariots useless in the mud. This natural disaster turned the tide in favor of the Israelites. Judges 
chapter 4 verse 15 describes the moment of victory. At Barak's advance, the Lord routed Sisera and all his chariots and army by the sword, and Sisera got down from his chariot and fled on foot. Sisera's flight led him to the tent of Jael, the wife of Heber, the Kenite, who ultimately killed him, fulfilling Deborah's prophecy that a woman would claim the honor of victory. The Song of Deborah Following the victory, Deborah and Barak sang a song of triumph recorded in Judges chapter 5. This song is one of the oldest passages in the Bible and celebrates God's deliverance and the bravery of the Israelite leaders and soldiers. The song emphasizes God's sovereign, sovereignty and the collective effort of the tribes of Israel in overcoming their oppressors. Deborah's story underscores the importance of faith and courage in overcoming oppression. Her prophetic insight, combined with Barak's military leadership and the divine intervention, led to a significant victory for Israel. Deborah's example teaches us about the power of faith, the importance of obedience to God's commands, and the impact of strong, godly leadership. Gideon Gideon's Call and Initial Doubts Gideon's story begins during a time of severe poverty, persecution, and powerlessness for the Israelites. The Midianites, along with the Amalekites and other eastern peoples, were oppressing Israel by destroying their crops and livestock, leading to widespread famine and despair. Gideon, like many Israelites, was deeply affected by this oppression and was found threshing wheat in a wine press to hide it from the Midianites. That is in Judges chapter 6, verse 11. God called Gideon to deliver Israel from the Midianites through an angelic visitation. The angel greeted him with, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. You can see that from Judges 6, 12. Gideon, however, expressed doubts about his capability and questions God's presence, saying, If the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? But now, the Lord has abandoned us and given us into the hand of Midian. That is in Judges chapter 6, verse 13. Despite his doubts and feelings of inadequacy, Gideon was reassured by God's promise of support. Go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? That is in Judges 6.14. Gideon's reluctance and request for signs to confirm God's calling illustrate his initial struggle with faith and self-doubt. Unconventional means and victory. Gideon's leadership and military strategy highlight the theme of God using the weak to confound the mighty. After assembling an army of 32,000 men, God instructed Gideon to reduce the number of troops to ensure that the Israel would recognize that their victory was due to divine intervention and not their own strength. The army was reduced to just 300 men who were chosen based on how they drank water. That is in Judges chapter 7, verses 4 to 7. Armed with trumpets, empty jars, and torches, Gideon's small force launched a surprise attack on the Midianites' camp. The confusion and fear caused by the noise and lights 
led the Midianites to turn on each other, resulting in their defeat. That is in Judges 7, 19-22. This unconventional victory demonstrated that God's power can achieve what seems impossible by human standards. Lessons from Gideon's Leadership Gideon's story offers us several important lessons. First, it highlights the dangers of presumption and the importance of humility and reliance on God. Despite his initial doubts, Gideon ultimately trusted in God's guidance and acted in obedience, leading to a miraculous victory. Second, Gideon's later actions, including the creation of an ephod that became an object of idolatry, serve as a cautionary tale about the consequences of pride and need for continued faithfulness. Gideon's legacy is complex. While he delivered Israel from Midianites and led them to a period of peace, his late Later actions and the negative legacy of his son Abimelech illustrate the ongoing struggle between faithfulness and human weakness. Gideon's story teaches us about the importance of repentance, the dangers of presumption, and the necessity of relying on God's strength rather than our own. Samson the, nice, the Nazirite vow and early life. Samson from the tribe of Dan was set apart from birth as a Nazirite, a person dedicated to God with specific vows, including abstaining from alcohol, avoiding contact with dead bodies, and not cutting his hair. His extraordinary strength was a divine gift tied to his Nazarite vow. Samson's birth was announced by an angel to his barren mother, signifying his special role in God's plans to deliver Israel from the Philistines. Judges 13 verses 3 to 5 Samson's early life was marked by notable feats of strength and conflicts with the Philistines. However, his impulsive nature and weaknesses, particularly his attraction to Philistine women, foreshadowed the challenges he would face. Despite his flaws, Samson was used by God to begin the process of delivering Israel from their oppressors. Betrayal by Delilah Samson's story is a tragic one of broken vows and betrayal by Delilah. A woman he loved, who was bribed by the Philistine rulers to discover the secret of his strength. Delilah's persistent questioning eventually led Samson to reveal that his strength lay in his uncut hair. A symbol of his Nazarite vow, Judges 16, 17. Once Samson's hair was cut, he lost his strength and was captured by the Philistines. They blinded him and imprisoned him, using him as a grinder in their meal. The Samson's downfall illustrates the consequences of succumbing to temptation and the importance of remaining faithful to one's commitments to God. Final act of repentance and destruction. Despite his failures, Samson's story concludes with a, bit, the, with a powerful act of repentance and divine intervention. While in prison, Samson, Samson's hair began to grow back symbolizing the potential for restoration. During a Philistine celebration in the temple of Dagon, Samson was brought out to entertain the crowd. In this moment of vulnerability, Samson prayed to God for strength one last time. 
Sovereign Lord, remember me. Please, God, strengthen me, strengthen me just once more. And let me with one blow get revenge on the Philistines for my two eyes. That is in Judges 16.28. God granted Samson's request, and with his restored strength, he pushed against the pillars of the temple, causing it to collapse and killing many Philistines along with himself. Judges 16.30 records, Thus he killed many more when he died than while he lived. Samson's final act of repentance and destruction of the Philistine temple demonstrated God's continued use of flawed individuals for His purpose and the possibility of redemption even after significant failures. Lessons from Samson's Life Samson's life offers profound lessons about the dangers of presumption the consequence of broken vows, and the potential for redemption through repentance. His story teaches us that, number one, faithfulness to God. Samson's nice, uh, Nazarite vow was a symbol of his dedication to God. Breaking this vow led to his downfall, highlighting the importance of remaining faithful to our commitments to God. Number two, dangers of temptation. Samson's weakness for Philistine women, particularly Delilah, illustrates the destructive power of the temptation. His inability to resist temptation ultimately led to his capture and suffering. Number three, power of repentance. Despite his failure, Samson's final act of repentance and prayer for strength demonstrates that it is never too late to turn back to God. His restored strength and ultimate sacrifice show that God can still use flawed individuals to achieve His purpose. Number 4. God's Sovereignty Samson's story underscores God's sovereignty and his ability to work through imperfect people. Even in Samson's weaknesses and mistakes, God's plan for Israel's deliverance was fulfilled. Conclusion The stories of Deborah, Gideon, and Samson highlight the diverse ways in which God used judges to save Israel from oppression and lead them back to faithfulness. Deborah's prophetic leadership and collaboration with Barak, Gideon's unconventional victory over the Midianites, and Samson's tragic yet redemptive life demonstrate the importance of faith, courage, and reliance on God. Each judge's story provides valuable lessons about the power of God's deliverance the dangers of turning away from Him, and the hope of restoration through repentance. Through these narratives, we see God's enduring faithfulness and His willingness to use flawed individuals to accomplish His divine purposes. Let's go to Ruth, a supplemental book. Provides contrast. Introduction, a stark contrast. The book of Ruth stands in stark contrast to the prevailing narrative of disobedience and moral decline depicted in the book of Judges. While Judges chronicles Israel's repeated forsaking of God, Ruth presents the story of faithfulness, loyalty, and divine providence. This narrative divergent highlights the themes of redemption, and God's ongoing care for His people, even during periods of widespread apostasy. Judges, Israel forsakes God, the cycle of apostasy. In the book of Judges, Israel repeatedly turns away from God, 
falling into a cycle of sin, oppression, supplication, salvation, and relapse. The Israelites' disobedience, characterized by idolatry and moral corruption, leads to periods of suffering under foreign oppressors. Its cycle begins with Israel's apostasy and ends with God's deliverance through a judge, only for the cycle to repeat as the people once again abandon their faith. Consequences of Unfaithfulness The narrative in Judges underscore the direct consequences of Israel's unfaithfulness. Without a central godly leadership, the nation descends into chaos and moral decay. The refrain, In those days Israel had no king, everyone did as they saw fit. Judges 21 to 25 encapsulates the anarchy and spiritual desolation that prevail. This backdrop of disobedience and instability sets the stage for the contrasting story of Ruth. Ruth, a Moabite, turns to God. Naomi and Elimelech in Moab. The book of Ruth begins with a famine in Bethlehem, prompting Elimelech, his wife, Naomi, and their sons to move to Moab. This relocation to a foreign pagan land introduces the central characters and the initial hardships they face. After the deaths of Elimelech and Naomi's sons, Naomi decides to return to Bethlehem hearing that the Lord had provided food for His people. Ruth's loyalty and faith Ruth, a Moabite and the widow of one of Naomi's sons, displays remarkable loyalty and faithfulness. Despite Naomi's urging to stay in Moab, Ruth insists on accompanying her to Bethlehem, declaring, Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. That is in Ruth 16 to 17. Ruth's commitment to Naomi and her embrace of the God of Israel exemplify her steadfastness and faith. Gleaning in Boaz's field Upon their return to Bethlehem, Ruth begins to glean in the fields to provide for herself and Naomi. She happens to glean the field of Boaz, a wealthy relative of Elimelech. Boaz, impressed by Ruth's dedication to Naomi and her hard work, ensures her protection and provision. He instructs his workers to allow Ruth to glean among the ships and leave extra grain for her. Boaz, the kinsman redeemer. Naomi recognizes Boaz as a potential kinsman redeemer, a relative who could marry Ruth and preserve the family line. Following Naomi's advice, Ruth approaches Boaz at the threshing floor a culturally significant act indicating her desire for his protection and redemption. Boaz, acknowledging Ruth's integrity and loyalty, agrees to take on the role of a kinsman redeemer, but first seeks to resolve the matter with a closer relative who has prior claim. Marriage and Redemption Boaz successfully negotiates with the nearer kinsman who relinquishes his right to redeem Naomi's land and marry Ruth. Boaz marries Ruth, thus securing her and Naomi's future. This union results in the birth of Obed, the grandfather of King David, and places Ruth, a Moabite, in the lineage of Jesus Christ. Themes of Redemption and Providence 
the story of Ruth underscores the themes of redemption and divine providence. Ruth's inclusion in the genealogy of David and ultimately Jesus highlights God's grace and the unexpected ways he fulfills his promises. Her faithfulness and Boaz's role as kinsman redeemer illustrate the broader biblical theme of God's redemption of his people. Tribes of Dan and Benjamin during Judges The Idolatry of the Danites The story of the tribe of Dan, as recounted in Judge, Judges 18, illustrates the descent into idolatry and apostasy. The Danites, seeking territory to inhabit, seven, sent out spies to encounter a Levite serving as a priest for a man named Micah, who had set up a shrine with household gods. The, Dan the Danites convinced the Levite to accompany them, and they steal Micah's idols to establish their own center of worship in Laish. This narrative highlights the moral decay and spiritual confusion prevalent during this period. The Danites' actions reflect a departure from true worship and descent into syncretism and idolatry, contributing to the broader chaos and unfaithfulness in Israel. The Horrific Incident of the Levite's Concubine One of the most disturbing stories in the book of Judges involves the tribe of Benjamin and the horrific incident of the Levite concubine that is in Judges 19.21. A Levite traveling with his concubine six refuge in the Benjamite city of Gibeah. The men of the city, described as vase fellows or sons of Belial, demand to violate the Levite. To protect himself, the Levite offers his concubine to the mom, who brutally abuses her throughout the night, leading to her death. The Levite's subsequent dismemberment of her body and the distribution of the pieces to the tribes of Israel incites outrage and prompts a civil war against Benjamin. The narrative underscores the depth of moral depravity and lawlessness that had overtaken Israel, necessitating drastic measures to restore justice. Consequences of Unchecked Sin The stories of the tribes of Dan and Benjamin during the period of the Judges illustrate the consequences of unchecked sin and the moral decay that ensues in the absence of godly leadership. The idolatry of the Danites and the heinous actions of the Benjamites reflect the broader societal breakdown and the urgent need for reform and renewal. Do not allow venial sins to go unchecked. Importance of Vigilance the, account, the accounts of the tribes of Dan and Benjamin teach us that even small misdemean, misdemeanors can grow into great evils if left unchecked. The initial idolatry of Micah, though seemingly minor, spiraled into the widespread apostasy of the Danites. Similarly, the hospitality failure in Gibeah escalated into a horrific crime sparkling a civil war with a devastating consequences. Preventing moral and spiritual failures Vigilance in addressing minor sins is crucial to prevent them from escalating into significant moral and spiritual failures. The narratives in Judges serve as a stark warning about the dangers of complacency and the importance of maintaining faithfulness to God. By addressing small transgressions and fostering a culture of accountability and righteousness, 
communities can avoid the pitfalls that lead to greater evils. Application for Modern Believers For modern believers, these lessons emphasize the need for constant self-examination and the cultivation of a disciplined spiritual life. Small compromises in faith and ethics can lead to significant moral lapses if not addressed promptly. By nurturing a deep and abiding relationship with God and adhering to His commandments, believers can maintain their integrity and avoid the destructive consequences of unchecked sin. Conclusion a tale of two paths. The contrasting narratives of Judges and Ruth offer profound insights into the consequences of faithfulness and unfaithfulness. While Judges depicts the tragic cycle of apostasy, oppression, and partial deliverance, Ruth represents a story of loyalty, redemption, and divine providence. The faithfulness of Ruth, a Moabite, and her integration into the lineage of David and Jesus Christ highlights God's inclusive grace and His ability to bring about His purposes through unlikely individuals. The moral and spiritual decline illustrated by the tribes of Dan and Benjamin serves as a cautionary tale about the dangers of unchecked sin and the necessity of godly leadership. These stories underscore the importance of vigilance in maintaining faithfulness to God and addressing even minor transgressions before they escalate into greater evils. Through the juxtaposition of these narratives, we are reminded of the enduring themes of redemption, divine providence, and the transformative power of faith. By learning from the examples of Ruth and the warning from Judges, believers can cultivate a life of integrity, faithfulness, and reliance on God's grace, ensuring that they remain aligned with His will and purpose. Thank you for joining us for this deep dive into the book of Judges, where we explore the era characterized by the phrase, Every man did what was right in his own eyes. The stories of incomplete conquest, idolatry, moral chaos, and the cycle of sin and salvation highlight the challenge Israel faced during this tumultuous time. Yet through the figures like Deborah, Gideon, and Samson, we see God's enduring mercy and the hope of redemption. As we close this episode, let's reflect on the lessons learned about the dangers of moral relativism the importance of faithful leadership, and the need for vigilance in our spiritual lives. Judges teach us that even in periods of darkness, God's faithfulness remains steadfast, offering us guidance and deliverance when we turn back to Him. Stay tuned for our next episode titled Royal Kingdom, From Judges to Monarchy, where we will explore the pivotal transition from theocracy to monarchy in Israel. We'll delve into the lives of Samuel, Saul and David, three key figures whose stories provide profound theological insight and lessons for believers today. Discover how their leadership marked a new era in salvation history, setting the stage for the future of the Israelite nation. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to stay updated on our latest episodes. Thank you for watching, and we look forward to continuing this journey through salvation history with you.